Hey, it's Dustin. And it's Nova. And today we're talking about our Aroha New Zealand retreat. Now, this is a retreat we have been doing since 2016. We had a course of few years off for the pandemic and we just got back last week. So we really wanted to kind of unpack what this retreat looks like. So if you've never heard of it, what is it? Aroha is a very magical place located in the Southern Alps on New Zealand's South Island. You fly into Queenstown and then are picked up, shuttled about 45 minutes away to the most picturesque setting ever. The retreat center is nuzzled in against the mountains overlooking Lake Wakatipu, and it looks straight out of a postcard. So once you get there, everything is catered for, and the feeling just by being in this place is truly awe-inspiring to be surrounded by mountains and nature that truly makes your jaw drop everywhere you look that has a very special effect on your body mind and soul yeah so we just got back it was a five night six day retreat and for me personally i'm feeling very regenerated it was a retreat that i i wasn't necessarily like needing i wasn't kind of at that burnout phase i've definitely been to this retreat before when i've been at that kind of tipping point of my life, whether it's work or work-life balance can be sometimes tough as we all know. But for this retreat, I wasn't feeling that. I was actually going into feeling really good, but I came out feeling even better. And a few big shifts I've had this week uh, is especially around diet. I feel like I've cleaned up a lot of the sugar that I was eating. It's obviously winter here in Melbourne. So just kind of being a little bit too heavy on food sometimes. And I realized how good I felt that week of just eating plant-based, a little bit lighter. It's how much better I felt in my body. Um, I've definitely cut down on alcohol, but I think the biggest shift for me has been a mindset shift. So I was really, I guess, um, grasping and attaching onto things and I was creating meaning in my life where I didn't need to create meaning. And so I've walked away with a lot much more of a lighter feeling. Uh, my mantra while I was there was, I am water. And so I'm really trying to embody that. So how are you feeling? I feel really settled and grounded. Much like you, before we left, I was feeling really good. Mm. And I was like, I feel amazing. This is going to make it even better. And then when I, I arrived, just timed myself, the process and what we do on the retreat and those practices truly grounded me and allowed me to connect to a part of myself that maybe was a bit disconnected. And so that time in nature, time to contemplate, to really slow down and just be mm. was amazing. And yeah, noticed a big difference from less refined foods and cutting out sugar completely. And what else? Sugar is delicious, but oh my God, without yeah. it, you feel so good. You feel so much better. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just, being there does something so special. Yeah. And like look, there's a reason I think why we keep going back, right? Dustin mm -hmm. and I have a lot of chats about this off camera and it is a really sacred and special place to us. There's something about the land. There's something about the environment. Like Dustin said, when you're in it, it really does feel so good for the soul. So the good news is we are going back there next year, the exact same week as that we went this year. So we're back on the 2nd to the 7th of June, 2024. Now, I will disclose, it is, of course, winter in Australia and in New Zealand at that time of year. However, I've gone to this retreat six times. I think it doesn't mean eight. And winter actually happened to be my favorite time to go. I think because it wasn't snowing when we were there, but on the hikes, we got to trek through the snow and it was like a magical forest it was like just winter wonderland it yeah. was like a winter wonderland it was so beautiful and so yes it's cold the air is about you know zero I think that was a high of two degrees some days a high of seven some days it varied but we dress for the warmth because in New Zealand the buildings are built for it they're all heated underground so you feel really warm when you're in the spaces and then when you are on hikes or doing activities outside you're dressed in thermals, of course, and then layers. I was saying off camera just before that we actually feel colder in Melbourne than we did in New Zealand last week when it was much, much colder. So there's something magic about winter, blue skies, snow-capped mountains. It's cold, but it's definitely beautiful. Yeah, I agree. It gave me new appreciation for what cold truly is. And we also <laughs> do some cold immersion and some activities that truly acclimate you to the weather. And now back in Melbourne, there are moments where I have been cold, but I'm actually less reactive. I feel more comfortable. Like this morning was five degrees in Melbourne 
And I walked outside and I was like, oh, it's fresh. It didn't, it didn't hit me in the face like it did previously. So yeah. not only was it amazing to walk through these winter wonderland like landscapes and play in the snow and see these things, but it gave me a true appreciation to realize that no, it's not that cold. And if we change our mindset, getting out there can really shift a lot of things for you physically, mentally, emotionally. Totally. So if you can get past the winter factor, we'll talk through the rest of the retreat. So it's five nights, as we mentioned. What's fantastic about this retreat is it's a small group. So it's a maximum of 20 participants. And what is even more amazing is the curation factor of this retreat is next level. So let's talk about the food because the food is definitely a highlight. Yeah, such a Mm -hmm. highlight. There's a full team of chefs and they aim to produce most of the vegetables and what goes in produce and what goes into your meals on site. And I believe like it was like 75 or 80 percent of our diet for the week was literally grown on site at Aroha. And that's truly special. Very minimal miles on the food to get it to us. And the amount of love and care that goes into each meal is truly wow. You can truly see the passion of the chefs and they come out and explain what goes into each and every detail of it. And it's it's vegan, but it's like five star gourmet vegan. I never once was hungry, completely satiated. And at the same time, I felt so light and nourished. And yeah. so I, I remember on the first night, I was lying in bed and thinking, oh, I wish I could feel this good every night going to bed. Mm. I was like perfectly satiated, as you said. I wasn't too full. I wasn't hungry at all. And it just the whole week I felt good. And like Dustin said, it is plant-based. So yes, it is vegan. So no, no dairy, no refined sugars, definitely no gluten. It's a completely gluten-free week. So celiacs out there, this is the retreat for you. Um, of course, no alcohol and no coffee and stimulants and all other things. But you just feel so good. And the, the food is 100% one of the favorite things that the retreatees have on this retreat. They always walk away so excited to recreate some of these meals at home. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a highlight of the retreat. And then the passion of the chefs, they want to share how to do these practices of creating these things and bring it home. So there's little workshops and other little highlights that will help you not only feel amazing when you're there, but to bring this home with you and how to incorporate this into your daily life, which is a game changer. Yeah. And when we talk about the curation of this retreat, what we mean is you actually get to choose your meal portion sizes. So if you're looking to eat a little bit leaner that way, you can do that or you can change day to day or meal to meal. They're so flexible with it. So I personally went on the largest scale of things um, for the week. I wanted to eat a lot of food because it's just so delicious. And I still felt amazing. And I actually ended up just coincidentally, just because of the amount of movement and and food, I ended up losing weight, even on the biggest portion of food. And I know you did too. So it just goes to show that what we're putting into our body is just nourishing. And that's, you know, it's definitely not a a retreat where they calorie count. It's nothing like that. But it just goes to show how you can still feel so good and be nourished by this food. Definitely. Um, another highlight is the movement, the daily yoga practices. And I wanted to speak to this because some people have told us, they're like, there's no way that I could practice yoga twice a day. Mm-hmm. And we want to ensure you, we both lead the yoga practices for the week. And I make sure that the morning classes are slower vinyasa practice with a real focus on preparing you for the day and kind of unraveling whatever we might have done previously. So totally. like always, levels for everyone from this is my first experience of yoga to, to I love yoga and do it daily. And then in the evenings, we do something like a restorative yin practice and some other little su- surprises. So we make sure that not only do we cater to everyone that comes and their ability and level, mm. but we balance it out so that it's never too much too soon. We want you to feel amazing. Yeah, I always say to people that I speak to one-on-one or in the studio that this retreat is heavily movement focused, but mainly around the hikes or the walks, you know, because they are well-formed path. They're not off kind of the beaten track hikes. So the yoga is really supporting those hikes. So as Dustin said, the morning practices are generally energizing and, you know, a slow flow into a kind of vinyasa style practice that really gets you ready and set up for the hike. It's the best way to start the day. And the evening practice is a totally the opposite of that and getting you ready to settle into the sleep. Yeah, relax and ready for bed. 
the hikes themselves are truly epic mm. and the amazing hiking team. So you have a team of guides that leads you on these hikes. They truly cater for every ability and preference on the day. So maybe you feel like running ahead and doing extra and running up a mountain, they'll look after you. If you're not feeling up on that day, you don't want to hike, you could totally opt out or even just go for a gentle walk and they'll look after you on that adventure as well. Yeah, that's something I love about this retreat. Mm. There's been days over the years that we've gone to the retreat that I just haven't felt 100%, maybe felt a bit, you know, exhausted. Maybe there's, you know, a joint issue or a body issue that's feeling a bit sore. And I've totally opted just to stay back and, you know, cozy up by the fire and read a book. Um, or there's days where I've chosen to, to try and challenge myself and go that little bit further and do a longer hike. The hikes are anywhere between 10 to 15 Ks per day. And as Dustin said, there's always options to level down or level up. So it really is, again, a curated retreat. Yeah, you choose your own adventure and an adventure that's appropriate to you. <laughs> and then After I'm, the hikes. Yeah, <laughs> a huge highlight for me, and I think for everyone, yes. is when you get back from the hike, you have an amazing lunch, but then a daily massage from truly a team of some of the best body workers I've ever experienced in my life. Same. And not only that, they share their notes, work together, and by the end, every single time I've been, I walk away feeling better than my, in my body than ever. Yeah, we both said this retreat that our hiking, our yoga, and the body work that we had, like leveled us up. We felt like the best we've ever felt energetically. It was really amazing. Yeah. So after that, and some little spaces in between, there's lots of time for you to chill. Aroha has one of the most beautiful spas that's super well equipped. We won't go into the details, but there's hot and cold therapy, stunning view, and little nooks and crannies for you to cozy up, read a book. Yeah. So the afternoons, I guess, on retreat are your time, your downtime. So whether you choose, like Dustin said, to kind of cozy up and read a book or you can have a hot cold therapy. There are also workshops, but these are workshops on this podcast that we're not gonna go into purely because if you do choose to join us on this experience, we do wanna keep a few things secret and sacred. There's some magic that unfolds throughout the week. Um, they're always evolving the retreat as well and new things and new kind of ideas and concepts are coming about all the time, but it is truly special. And this is often where a lot of the magic unfolds in these afternoons when we do these really special workshops. Some people choose to have a nap. Some people choose to do um, book reading or chilling out or meditation or whatever it is that you need. This, this retreat is really goal oriented for your goals. I agree. And Damien, who runs the retreat, is a good friend. Him and his partner, Anna, do some really powerful workshops and really tap you back into your heart. Yeah. Overall, the holistic experience is second to none. And every detail has been thought out. Mm, You're truly 100%. looked after. So- 100%. I feel like that's one of the major advantages of this retreat is that you don't have to think about anything. You mm. can just really unplug. And a lot of people use this week to physically unplug from phones, smartwatches, email. computers, email, you know, to-do lists, to do lists, all the things. It's one of those retreats where you could actually turn your phone and laptop off, put them, you know, under the bed and somebody would come and find you for every step of the day and you wouldn't have to worry about a thing. And that's really rewarding, right? Because we've all been on holidays where you have to then look on your phone. Okay. Where am I going to go for dinner? Okay. What are we going to do, you know, for this afternoon or what are we going to do for this morning? There's a lot of planning involved, whereas this is all kind of taken care for you. So you can just simply arrive and just unplug. Um, a lot of other people use it as a reset. You know, of course, there's no alcohol, no sugar, things like that we said for that. Um, so you can use it as a real energetic reset, a physical reset, mental, mental reset. reset, soul reset. <laughs> Overall, it's really, really, I think like here in Melbourne, I would like to consider myself very mindful. I mm. live a very kind of intentional life and something magic happened when I was there last week. It just really brought me back into my heart and reminded me, although I'm doing all these things, I still need to slow down a little bit and step away from the to-do list a little bit. And so mm. 
that that's so true the space this experience creates and the fact that you can switch off and not have to worry about being somewhere at a certain time because if you're not there someone will come find gently you. <laughs> come find you and make sure everything's all good and lead you there so as someone that is very kind of like goal driven oriented constantly ticking the things off the list to just let that go and still know that everything's going to be completely looked after and find its way is really really nice yeah agree i feel the same i feel like my life i'm very um scheduled by my to-do list my life is very scheduled in general i kind of have a map of where i need to be and what i need to do every day and that's something i love about this retreat and every time we go it does make me realize oh, i need to i need to shift a few things i need to just move the dial slightly so i can have a better work-life balance because life's not that long <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you got to enjoy the ride so I think if spending time in nature that makes you go, wow, looking after your mind, body, and spirit through practices of holistic eating, mindful movement, intention setting, mindset work, belief system work, all these different aspects that just bring you back home. If you're looking for any of these pieces, I think Aroha is an experience not to be missed. I agree. And I think it is a a massive bucket list item retreat for a lot of people. It's one of the most world-renowned retreats on lots of lists, lots of different lists that they, they feature on. So if there's something that feels like passionate to you or you're excited or you're lit up, you're like, yes, I want to make this happen, please reach out to us. Um, you can find all the details about the 2024 retreat on our website. And we will be touching base with everyone personally just to have a conversation and make sure it feels aligned, make sure we can set you up for a really successful retreat. So thank you so much. And we hope to retreat with you next year. Hope you can join us. Aloha. Aloha.